ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वी विल रीड फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेल्व एंड थर्टीन ऑफ द नेक्ट ऑफ डिवोशन भक्ति सांद्र सिंधु ओरिजिनली बाय रूप गोस्वामी एंड इन इंग्लिश बाय इस भक्तिविदान स्वामी प्रभुपाद मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघते गिरम यत कृपा तमम वंदेश गुरुम दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्यश्वरम हरिओम तत्सर चैप्टर ट्वेल्व फर्दर आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल सर्विस हियरिंग द रिवील स्क्रिप्चर्स अकॉर्डिंग टू शील रूप को स्वामी एनी बुक विच गिव्स एनलाइटनमेंट इन द मैटर ऑफ एडवांसिंग इन डिवोशनल सर्विस इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी रिवील स्क्रिप्चर शील माधवाचार्य माधवाचार्य हैज ऑल्सो डिफाइंड Reveal scriptures as referring to books such as Ramayana, Mahabharata, Purans, Upanishads, Vedanta, and any other literature written in pursuance of such reveal scriptures. <clears throat> in the Skanda Puran, there is a statement: A person who is constantly engaged in reading literature, enunciating the cultivation of Vaishnav devotional service, is always glorious in human society, and certainly Lord Krishna becomes pleased with him. A person who very carefully keeps such literature at home and offers respectful obeisances to it becomes freed from all sinful reactions and ultimately becomes worshipable by the demigods. It is also said to Narad Muni, my dear Narad, a person who writes version of literature and keeps such literature at home has Lord Narayan always residing in his house. In Srimad Bhagavatam 12th Canto 13th Chapter verse 15 it is stated, Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. Any person who has become attached in some way or other to the reading of Srimad Bhagavatam cannot have any taste for reading any other literature. In other words, a person who has relished the transcendental bliss of Srimad Bhagavatam cannot be satisfied with mundane writings residing in Mathura. In the Varaha Puran, there is a statement praising the residential quarters of Mathura. Lord Varaha tells the men of earth, any person who becomes attracted to places other than Mathura will certainly be captivated by the illusory energy. In the Brahmand Puran, it is said that all the results of traveling on all the pilgrimages within the three worlds can be achieved simply by touching the holy land of Mathura. In many Shastras, that is the scriptures, it is said that simply by hearing, remembering, glorifying, desiring, Seeing or touching the land of Mathura, one can achieve all desires. Rendering service to devotees. In the Padma Puran, there is a nice statement praising the service of the Vaishnava devotees. In that scripture, Lord Shiva tells Parvati, My dear Parvati, there are different methods of worship, and out of all such methods, the worship of the Supreme Person is considered to be the highest. But even higher than the worship of the Lord is the worship of the Lord's devotees. A similar statement is in the third canto, seventh chapter, verse 19 of Srimad Bhagavatam. Let me become a sincere servant of the devotees, because by serving them one can achieve unalloyed devotional service unto the lotus feet of the Lord. The service of devotees diminishes all mis miserable material conditions and develops with in one a deep devotional love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Skanda Puran, there is a similar statement. Persons whose bodies are marked with tilak, symbolizing the conch shell, wheel, club and lotus, and who keeps the leaves of Tusi on their heads, and whose bodies are always decorated with Gopi Chandan, even once, even seen once, can help seer be relieved from, the, from all sinful activities. A similar statement is found in the first canto, 19th chapter, verse 33 of Srimad Bhagavatam. There is no doubt about one's becoming freed from all reactions to sinful activities after visiting a devotee or touching his lotus feet or giving him a sitting place. Even by remembering the activities of such a Vaishnav, one becomes purified along with one's whole family and what then can be said of rendering direct service to him. In the Adi Puran, there is the following statement by Lord Krishna himself addressed to Arjun, my dear Path. One who claims to be my devotee is not so. Only a person who claims to be the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. No one can approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly. One must approach him through his pure devotees. Therefore, in the system of Vaishnava activities, the first duty is to accept a devotee as spiritual master and then to render service unto him. Shri Rupa Goswami confirms 
sorry, affirms that all the quotations given in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu from different scriptures are accepted by the great acharyas and devotees of the Lord. Serving the Lord according to one's position. In the Padma Puran, there is a statement that one should perform the ceremonies for the Lord according to one's financial position. Everyone should observe the different ceremonies and celebrations of the Lord by all means. Performing devotional service in Kartik. One of the most important of these ceremonial functions is called Urja Vrat. Urja Vrat is observed in the month of Kartik, October, November, especially in Vrindavan. There is a specific program for temple worship of the Lord in his Damodar form. Damodar refers to Krishna being bound with rope by his mother Yashoda. It is said that just as Lord Damodar is very dear to his devotees, so the month known as Damodar or Kartik is also very dear to him. The execution of devotional service during Urjavrat in the month of Kartik is especially recommended to be performed in Mathura. The system is still followed by many devotees. They go to Mathura or Vrindavan and stay there during the month of Kartik specifically to perform devotional services during this period. In the Padma Puran, it is said the Lord may offer liberation or material happiness to a devotee, but after some devotional service has been ex executed, particularly in Mathura during the period of Kartik, the devotees want only to attain pure devotional service unto the Lord. The purport is that the Lord does not award devotional service to ordinary persons who are not serious about it. But even such unserious persons who execute devotional service according to the regulative principles during the month of Kartik and within the jurisdiction of Mathura in India are very easily awarded the Lord's personal service. Observing festivals celebrating the Lord's activities. In the Bhavishya Puran, there is a statement about observing different ceremonies celebrating the Lord's appearance for birthday and other transcendental activities. It is said, My Lord Janardhan or Krishna, please let us know the date when your mother Devaki gave birth to you. If you kindly inform us about this, then we shall observe a great celebration on this day. O killer of Keshi, we are souls, 100%, surrendered unto your lotus feet, and we wish only to please you with other ceremony, our ceremonies. This statement of the Bhavishya Puran gives evidence that by observing different functions in relationship with the Lord, one is sure to become pleasing to the Lord. Serving the deity with great devotion. It is said in Adi Puran, a person who is constantly engaged in chanting the holy name and who feels transcendental pleasure being engaged in devotional service is certainly awarded the facilities of devotional service and is never given just mukti or the liberation. Mukti means liberation from material contamination. When liberated, one does not have to take birth again in the material world. The impersonalist desire to merge into the spiritual existence, to end their individual existence. But according to Srimad Bhagavata, Mukti is only the beginning of one's becoming situated in his normal condition. The normal condition of every living entity is to be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. From the statement of the Adi Puran, it appears that a devotee is satisfied simply with being engaged in devotional service. He does not aspire for any liberation from material conditional life. In other words, Anyone who is engaged in devotional service is not in the material condition of life, although he may appear so. Recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam among devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam is the desire tree of Vedic wisdom. Veda itself means the aggregate of knowledge, and whatever knowledge is required for a human society is perfectly presented in Srimad Bhagavatam. There are different branches of knowledge in the Vedic writings, including sociology, politics, medicine and military art. All these and other branches of knowledge are perfectly described in the Vedas. So as far as spiritual knowledge is concerned, there is also perfectly described there and Srimad Bhagavatam is considered to be ripened fruit and this desire fulfilling trees of the Vedas. A tree is honored by the production of its fruit. For example, a mango tree is considered very valuable because it produces the king of all fruits, the mango. When the mango fruits become ripened, it is greatest gift of the tree. And Srimad Bhagavatam is similarly held to be ripened fruit of the Vedic tree. And as ripened fruit becomes more relishable, when first touched by the break, beak of a parrot or shuka, Srimad Bhagavatam has become more relishable by being delivered through the transcendental mouth of Shukadev Goswami. Srimad Bhagavatam should be received in disciplic succession without any breakage. 
when a ripened fruit comes from the upper part of the tree onto the ground by the process of being handed down from a high branch to a lower branch by persons in the tree, the fruit does not break. Shrimad Bhagavatam, when received in the Parampara system or disciplic succession, will likewise remain unbroken. It is stated that Bhagavad Gita that, that the disciplic succession or Parampara is the way of receiving transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge must come down through the disciplic succession through authorized persons who know the real purpose of the Shastra. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended that one learn Srimad Bhagavatam from the mouth of a self-realized person called Bhagavatam. Bhagavat means in relationship with the personality of Godhead, Bhagwan. So the devotee is sometimes called Bhagavatam and the book which is in the relationship with devotional service to the Supreme Paul's personality of Godhead is also called Bhagavatam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended that in order to relish the real taste of Srimad Bhagavatam, one should take instruction from the person Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is relishable even by a liberated person. Shukadev Goswami admitted that although he was liberated from within the very womb of his mother, it was only after relishing Srimad Bhagavatam that he became a great devotee. Thus, one who is desirous of advancing in Krishna consciousness should relish the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam through the discussions of authorized devotees. In Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, first chapter, verse 9, Shukadev Goswami admits that although he was very much attracted by the impersonal Brahman when he read the transcendental pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the mouth of his father Vyasadev, he became more attracted to Srimad Bhagavatam. The idea is that Vyasadev was also a self-realized soul and his mature con contribution of transcendental knowledge was delivered directly to Shukadev Goswami in the manner indicated. Associating with advanced devotees, the importance of discussing Srimad Bhagavatam in the society of pure devotees was explained by Shonak Muni during the meetings at Namisharanne in the presence of Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami confirmed that if someone is fortunate enough to associate with a pure devotee of the Lord even for a moment. That particular moment is so valuable that even those pious activities which can promote one to the heavenly planets or give liberation from material desire, miseries cannot be compared to it. In the other words, those who are attached to Srimad Bhagavatam do not care for any kind of benefit derived from elevation to the higher planetary kingdoms or for the liberation which is conceived of by the impersonalists. As such, the association of pure devotees is so transcendently valuable that no kind of material happiness can compare to it. In the Hari Bhakti Subodhya, there is a conversation between Prahlad Maharaj and his father Hirnakashipu, in which Hirnakashipu addresses Prahlad in this way, My dear son, association is very important. It acts just like a crystal stone, which will reflect anything which is put before it. Similarly, if we associate with the flower-like devotee of the Lord, devotees of the Lord, and if our hearts are crystal clear, then certainly the same action will be there. Another example given in this connection is that if a man is potent and if a woman is not diseased, then by their conjugation there will be conception. In the same way, if the recipient of spiritual knowledge and the deliverer of spiritual knowledge are sincere and bona fide, there will be good results chanting the holy name of the Lord. The importance of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare is very strongly stressed in the second canto, first chapter, verse 11 of Srimad Bhagavatam in the following way. Shukadev Goswami tells Maharaj Parikshit, my dear king, if one is spontaneously attached to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it is said to be understood that he has attained the highest perfectional stage. It is specifically mentioned that the families who are aspiring after the fruitive uh, results of their activities. The salvationists who are aspiring to become one with the Supreme Person and the yogis who are aspiring after mystic perfections can achieve the results of their perfectional stages simply by chanting the Mahamantra. Shukadev uses the word nir Nirnitam, which means it has been already... been decided.
he was a liberated soul and therefore could not accept anything which was not conclusive so shukadev goswami all especially stresses that it has been already concluded that one who has become to the stage of chanting of Hare Krishna mantra with determination and steadiness must be considered to have already uh, has come to the stage of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra with determination and steadiness must be considered to have already passed the trials of fruitive activities, mental speculation and mystic yoga. The same thing is confirmed in the Adi Puran by Krishna while addressing Arjuna. He says, anyone who is engaged in chanting my transcendental name must be considered to be always associating with me. And I may tell you frankly that for such a devotee, I become easily purchased. In the Padma Puran, it is also stated the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is present only in the lips of a person who has for many births worshipped Vasudeva. It is further said in Padma Puran, there is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself. As such, the holy name is, a perfect, is as perfect as the Lord himself in fullness, purity and eternity. The holy name is not a material sound vibration nor has it any material contamination. The holy name cannot therefore be chanted offenselessly by one who has failed to purify his senses. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also by, but by sorry, by, but by adopting this chanting process, one has given been given a chance to actually purify himself, so that he may very soon chant offenselessly. I repeat, in other words, materialistic senses cannot properly chant the holy names of the Mahamantra, but by adopting this chanting process, one is given a chance to actually purify himself so that he may very soon chant offenselessly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended that everyone chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra just to cleanse the dust from the heart. It, if the dust of the heart is cleansed this way, then one can easily Right. So Mahaprabhu has recommended that everyone should chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra just to cleanse the dust from the heart. If the dust of the heart is cleansed away, then one can actually understand the importance of the holy name. For persons who are not inclined to clean the dust from their hearts and who want to keep things as they are, it is not possible to derive the transcendental knowledge. Or the transcendental result of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. One should therefore be encouraged to develop his service attitude toward the Lord because this will help him to chant without any offense. And so under the guidance of spiritual master, the discipline, disciple is trained to render service and the same at the same time. One should understand the importance of the holy name for persons who are not inclined to clean the dust from their hearts and who want to keep things as they are. It is not possible to derive the transcendental result of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. One should therefore be encouraged to develop his service attitude toward the Lord because this will help him to chant without any offense. And so under the guidance of spiritual master, the disciple is trained to render service and at the same time chant Hare Krishna mantra. As soon as one develops a spontaneous service attitude, he can immediately understand the transcendental nature of the holy names of the Malha Mantra, living in Mathura. In the Padma Purana, there is different statement about the As soon as one develops his spontaneous service attitude, he can immediately understand the transcendental nature of the holy names of the Mahamantra, living in Mathura. In the Pan Puran, there is a statement about the importance of living at holy places like Mathura or Dwarka. 
It is stated there to travel to different places of pilgrimage means to attain emancipation from material bondage. This emancipation, however, is not the highest perfectional stage. After attaining the liberatory stage, one has to become engaged in devotional service to the Lord. After attainment of the Brahma Bhuta, that is the liberation stage, one can further advance to engagement in devotional service. So this attainment of transcendental service, loving devotional service to the Lord is the goal of life and it can be achieved by very easily for one who lives in Mathura Mandal even for a few seconds. It is further said, who is that person who will not agree to worship the land of Mathura? Mathura can deliver all the desires and ambitions of the fruitive workers and the salvationists who desire to become one with the Supreme Brahman. Certainly, Mathura will. Mathura can deliver all the desires and ambitions of the fruitive workers and of the salvationists who desire to become one with the Supreme Brahman. Certainly, Mathura will deliver the desires of the devotee who simply aspires to be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. In the Vedic literature, it is also said how wonderful it is that simply by residing in Mathura, even for one day, one can achieve a transcendental loving animal brought toward him. One, even for residing in Mathura for one day, one can achieve the transcendental loving attitude toward the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This land of Mathura must be more glorious than by going to Dham, the Kingdom of God. So that was chapter 12. Now we'll move to chapter 13. Five potent forms of devotional service. Rupa Goswami has stated that five kinds of devotional activities, namely residing in Mathura, Worshipping the deity of the Lord, reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, serving a devotee and chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra are so potent that a small attachment for any one of the five items can arouse different. So... so Residing in Mathura is, is one of the uh, I repeat, reside, residing in Mathura, worshipping the deity of Lord, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, serving a devotee and chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra are so potent that a small attachment for any of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy even in a neophyte. Regarding worship, of the form of the Lord or Deity, Rupa Goswami has written the following verse, My dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy the company of your friends within this material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna, who is standing on the bank of Keshi a bathing place in Vrindavan. He is known as Govinda and his eyes were very enchanting. He is playing upon his flute and So regarding the worship of the form of the Lord deity, Rupa Goswami has written the following verse. My dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy the company of your friends, I've read it before, but I'm repeating it. Within this material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna, who is standing on the bank of Keshi Ghat, a bathing place in Vrindavan. He is known as Govinda and his eyes are very enchanting. He is playing upon his flute and on his head there is a peacock feather. And his whole body is illuminated by the moonlight in the sky. The purport of this verse is that if someone becomes attached to Sri Murti or deity of Krishna by worshipping at home, then he will forget the relationship of so-called friends, love and society. Thus, it is duty of every householder to install deities of the Lord at home and to begin the process of worshipping along with all his family members. This will save everyone from such unwanted activities as going to club, cinemas and dancing, parties, smoking, drinking, etc. All such nonsense will be forgotten if one stresses the worship of the deities at home. Rupa Goswami further writes, 
My dear foolish friend, I think that you have already heard some of the auspicious Srimad Bhagavatam, which decries seeking the result of fruitive activities, economic development and liberation. I think that it is certain that gradually the verses of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam describing the pastimes of Lord will enter your ears and go into your heart. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that endless one has the ability to throw out just like garbage the fruitive results of its ritualistic ceremonies, economic development and becoming one with the supreme of our salvation and becoming economic development and becoming one with the Supreme Lord or salvation. One cannot understand Srimad Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam deals exclusively with devotional service. Only one who studies Srimad Bhagavatam in the spirit of the renunciation can understand the pastimes of the Lord, which are described in the 10th character. Right. The Bhagavatam deals exclusively with devotional service. One who studies Bhagavatam in the spirit of renunciation can understand the pastimes of Lord which are described in the 10th canto. In other words, one should not try the topics of the 10th canto such as Rasa Leela unless he has spontaneous attraction for Srimad Bhagavatam. One must be situated in a pure devotional service before he can relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam as it is. In the above two verses of Rupa Goswami, there are some metaphorical analogies that indirectly condemn the association of materialistic society, friendship and love. People are generally attracted to everyone. Friendships and in the above two verses. Rupa Goswami, there are, of Rupa Goswami, there are some metaphorical analogies that indirectly condemn the association of materialistic society. Friendship and love. People are generally attracted to society, friendship and love, and they make elaborate arrangements and strong endeavors to develop these material contaminations. But to see the Sri Murtis of Radha and Krishna is to forget such devotees for material association. Now, Rupa Goswami composed his verse in such a way that he was seemingly praising the material association of the friendship and love was condemning the audience of Sri Murti or Govinda. This metaphorical Right. Rupa Goswami composed his verse in such a way that he was seemingly praising the material association of friendship and love was and was condemning the audience of Srimurti or Govinda. This metaphorical analogy is constructed in such a way that things which seem to be praised are condemned and things which are to be condemned are praised. The actual import of the verse is that one should not see the form of Govinda if one has at all wants to forget the nonsense of material material love. Srila Rupa Goswami has similarly described the transcendental nature of relishing topics which concern Krishna. A devotee once said, it is very astonishing that since I have seen this personality of Godhead who is washed away by the who is washed by the tears of my eyes, the shivering, shivering of my body and it is very astonishing that since I have seen the personality of God who is washed by the tears of my eyes, there is shivering of my body and he has made me, fa made me a failure in executing my material duties. Since seeing him, I cannot remain silent at home. I wish I go out to him always. The purpose of this statement is that as soon as one makes it, right. 
right and he has made me fail in executing my material duties since seeing him i cannot remain silently at home i wish to go out to him always the purpose of the statement is that as soon as one is fortunate enough to contact a pure devotee one must be anxious immediately to hear about krishna to learn about krishna or in other words to become fully krishna consciousness krishna conscious Similarly, there is a statement about hearing and chanting the Mahamantra. It is said that saints have been able to hear the vibrating strings of the Veena in the hands of Narada, who is always singing to the glories of Lord Krishna. Now the same vibration has entered my eyes. Uh, who is always singing the glories of Lord Krishna. Now this same sound vibration has entered my ears and I am always feeling the presence of the Supreme Personality. Gradually I am becoming bereft of all attachment for material enjoyment. Again, Sri Rupa Goswami has described Mathura Mandal. I remember the Lord standing by the banks of the Yamuna River, so beautiful amid the Kadamba trees, where many birds are chirping in the garden. And these impressions are always giving me transcendental realization of beauty and bliss. This feeling about Mathura Mandal and Vrindavan described by Rupa Goswami can actually be felt even by non-devotees. The places in the 84 square miles district of Mathura are so beautifully situated on the banks of the river Yamuna that anyone who goes there will never want to return to this material And these impressions are always giving me transcendental realizations of beauty and bliss. This feeling about Mathura Mandal and Vrindavan described by Rupa Goswami can be felt by non-devotees. The places, yes, I've read that already. Uh, the 84 mile, square mile district of Mathura is very beautiful. And all the places there are also situated so nicely on the banks of Yamuna that you don't want to come back to the material world. These statements by Rupa Goswami are actually are factually realized descriptions of Mathura and Vrindavan. All these qualities prove that Mathura and Vrindavan are situated transcendentally. Otherwise, there would be no possibility of invoking our transcendental sentiments in these places. Such transcendental feelings are aroused immediately and without fail after one arrives in Mathura or Vrindavan. In these statements about devotional service, Sometimes it may appear that the results have been overestimated, but actually there is no overestimation. Some devotees, as revealed scriptures, give evidence, have made, have had immediate results by such association, although this is not possible for all. For example, the Kumars immediately became devotees simply by smelling the incense of the temple. Bilu Mangal Thakur simply heard about Krishna and then immediately gave up his beautiful girl friend and started out for Mathura and Vrindavan where he became a perfect Vaishnav. So these statements are not overestimations nor are they stories. They are fa actual facts but are true for certain devotees and not, do not necessarily apply to all. These descriptions even if considered overestimations must be taken as they are in order to divert our attention from the fleeting material beauty to the eternal beauty of Krishna consciousness. And for a person who is already in contact with Krishna consciousness, the described results are not unusual. Some scholars argue that simply by following the principles of Varna and Ashram, one can gradually rise to the perfections reached by practicing devotional service. But this argument is not accepted by the great authorities. Lord Chaitanya also condemned this idea while he was talking with Ramananda Rai about the gradual development of devotional service. He rejected the idea of the importance of Varnashram Dharma when it was put forward by Ramanand Rai. He said that this advancement of Varna and Ashram is merely external. There is a higher principle. In Bhagavad Gita also the Lord says that one has to give up all other principles of elevation and take simply to the method of Krishna consciousness that will help one in achieving the highest perfection in life. In the 11th canto, 20th chapter, verse 9 of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord himself says, 
one should execute the prescribed duties of varna and ashram as long as he has not developed spontaneous attachment for hearing about my pastimes and activities in other words the prescribed forms of varna and ashram are ritualistic ceremonies of religion intended for economic development sense gratification or salvation all of these things are recommended for persons who have not developed krishna consciousness in other in fact all such activities are recommended in the revealed scriptures only to bring one to the point of krishna consciousness but one who has already developed spontaneous attachment for krishna does not require to execute the duties prescribed in the scriptures so we will read from chapter 14 next time thank you for joining hari om tat sat hari krishna